Hey everybody, this is Bonnie Barker with BonnieBayCrochet.com and after many requests over the years, I've gone ahead and finally made the tutorial for the Gaithersburg stole that I'm wearing here. This is the original that is crocheted using um, Caron Simply Soft acrylic, 100% acrylic yarn. But for the demonstration in this video, I went ahead and switched up the yarn just a bit and I decided to go with a more natural fiber. So just to demonstrate that you can use a very variety of um, yarns for these different projects, especially something like a stole that is not so size specific as other garments might be. So anyway, um, for this one, I actually went from a worsted weight, which is a light worsted weight yarn or a light number four or Aran weight. And I took it down to a DK weight, which I actually kind of like just as well and um, again I said it's natural fibers and I'm going to show you the yarn that I used in just a minute but I just wanted to explain that this is a DK weight yarn or a number three which is going to explain why I used a smaller crochet hook for the demonstration so if you're going to make this using a worsted weight per the instructions in the book definitely stick with the larger size hook but if you decide to change up the yarn which is perfectly fine um, make sure that you size your hook according to the yarn that you select. The pattern for the Gaithersburg stole is available in the book Contemporary Celtic Crochet. This is available both in hard copy as well as PDF download um, from various outlets online such as Amazon.com, Walmart.com, um, Barnes & Noble, as well as from the publisher Penguin Random House. I also have copies in my um, Etsy store, so if you're looking for a signed autographed copy, um, please check out the links below and we'll be glad to get that to you. Well, let's go ahead and begin. In the original sample, I did use four scans of the Caron Simply Soft yarn, which is a number four, but it's a very light number four, almost a heavy number three. Therefore, I felt fine to substitute this lovely yarn that I found. It's um, Queensland collection called Drover. It's a merino silk tweed blend. Here are the stats on this 50% merino wool, 25% silk, and 25% polyester. And each of these balls has 330 yards. So I'm going to substitute four of these instead of using four uh, scans of the um, Caron Simply Soft. So you feel free to substitute as you like. Now, because of the substitution, I am not going to be using a size J hook. The original pattern calls for a size J hook, and if you stick with the number four size yarn, by all means, use a size J crochet hook. But for this demonstration, since I have bumped it down just slightly to a number three yarn, I'm going to be using my I or 9 or 5.50 millimeter crochet hook. So do take a note of that. If you are going to use a number four weight yarn, which you are absolutely free to do, make sure that you bump up to a just one size larger, size J or um, crochet hook, or you may want to just swatch a small sample with the yarn that you choose and to see which um, you know, which hook that you prefer to use. I promise I'm not trying to get real complicated on you all with the hook size, but I want you to be free with stoles and shawls since they're not so size specific. Feel free to experiment with what you like so that you create the fiber fabric that you love. Now I'm also recommending that you have a yarn needle and a pair of sharp scissors before we begin. To begin, we're going to start with our slip knot and we are going to chain a foundation chain of 213 chains. Now people always ask me if I want to make it longer, or if I want to make it shorter, what do I do? And the answer is simply add or subtract multiples of 12 to this beginning starting chain and that should be all you need to do should you want to make it longer or shorter. One additional help that may be helpful to you is using stitch markers to mark stitches as you count in the hundreds. So this will mark my 100th stitch. Of course, if you wanted to use additional stitch markers and mark every time you do 50 stitches or 25 stitches, that may actually help you to not lose your count and to keep your stitch count accurate. 
After crocheting those 213 chains, we're ready to work row one, and we are going to start in the second chain from the hook, and we are going to single crochet in each chain all the way across. Now I do crochet on one side of the V. If you look at the chains, they look like V's going down. I just use one side. I know some of you prefer to use the back bump. You can do that, but we will be working a perimeter round at the end, which is going to cover up the remaining part of this chain. So just keep that in mind. It may actually be easier to crochet the way I'm showing you so that you don't have to try to find two loops um, opposite the back bump. So go ahead and crochet these single crochets all the way across. You should have 212 stitches at the end of this row. So this is what you should have after completing that first row. Now if you have a little bit of curling at the end of your yarn, I wouldn't worry about it too much. Um, that should come out after the next two rows are worked. Okay, we're going to chain one, turn, and for row number two, we're going to begin working the low front ridge. This is actually the low front ridge row one of that particular stitch. We're going to skip the first stitch and starting in the second stitch and working in the front loop only, we're going to work slip stitches all the way across this row. Now make sure that you don't work these too tightly because if you do then it may pull the yarn a bit. So just in a relaxed manner, just work slip stitches across the row working only in the front loop. After completing row number two, this is what you should have with those slip stitches worked only in that front loop. Now we are going to turn, we're going to chain one, and just to point out, this is the remaining loop. We're going to be working in that loop for row number three, which also happens to be row number two of the low front ridge. And the reason I mention that is we are going to be working the low front ridge rows one and two many times in this project. So all we're going to do is we're going to single crochet in that remaining loop, just like this. And if you're not sure where that loop is, find that single crochet and then just go up with your hook. Okay, so go ahead and work that all the way across. And as you work that across, you should be forming this nice ridge, which is going to be, this is going to be the front side face, and we're actually working on the back side right now, but that will be shown on the front side of your work. Okay, after completing that row, let's go ahead and take a look. And you'll see that ridge that I talked to you about earlier. That's so nice. And it's going to frame the next stitch that we work very well. So for rows four and five, we're going to work the cable stitch. Now I'm going to kind of go through this on the quicker side, but if you need additional stitch support, please check the video description below where I will put a playlist of all the stitches that are used in my book, Contemporary Celtic Crochet. Okay, we're going to chain one and we're going to single crochet in that first stitch. Now we're going to form our first cable. We chain three, skip the next two stitches, one, two, and then we single crochet in that next stitch. And we're working through both loops the way we normally would. Okay, now we're going to turn our work so that we can work in the chains that we just formed. And just working in the side of the V, just like we did at the beginning of the foundation chain, single crochet in each of those three chains just like this. And now we're going to slip stitch in that first single crochet of the row. And now we're going to turn our work again. We're going to pull this cable down and the two stitches that we skipped, we're going to work our single crochets in them right now. One and two and the first cable is made. I'm going to do this with you a couple more times. Chain three. Now skip the next two stitches that have not been worked in. One, two, single crochet in that next stitch. Turn 
and working in those chains, just work on one of those loops, single crochet in those three chains that we just made, slip stitch in that next single crochet, and then we're going to turn again. We're going to pull down the cable so that we can see those two stitches that we skipped, and we're going to work single crochets in those two stitches. Okay, so now we have two cables, and that's what it's going to look like. It's going to look better once we work row two of this particular stitch. But now I'm going to show you another option instead of turning and turning and turning um, so that so that when this piece it becomes larger, be, when the stole becomes larger, it's going to be like a small blanket and you're not going to want to keep turning and turning and turning. So I'll show you an alternative. If the stitches work the same, chain three, skip two stitches, single crochet, and that next stitch. Now we're going to turn, make sure I have enough yarn here, and we're going to single crochet in the three stitches that we just skipped, or I'm sorry, in the three chains that we just made, getting my lingo mixed up, and slip stitch in that next stitch. Now instead of turning again, we can turn back like this, and then just bring, bring the yarn to the back side of your work, however you want to do that. Just make sure you bring the yarn to the back side, and then you see those two stitches that we skipped, go ahead and single crochet in those two stitches. And again, you can, you know, pull this cable down. I'm doing that. I'm going to do that for you one more time. Chain three, skip two stitches, single crochet in that next stitch. Go ahead and turn your work, single crochet in those next three chains and slip stitch in that next stitch. And now what you can do is turn back and then bring your yarn to the back side of your work and then single crochet, pull that cable down, single crochet in those two stitches that we just skipped. So go ahead and work these all the way across. At the end of the row, you should have a total of 70 cables. After working this all the way across the row, you should have one stitch remaining. We're just going to single crochet in that last stitch. If there's a chance that you were off by one stitch and you have no extra stitch here, just, just work it in the last place where the last stitch is of the row. You should be fine. Now we're going to turn and we're going to work row five, which is row number two of the cable stitch. We're going to chain one single crochet in that first stitch. Now this is the one that is not behind the cables. Now in the next stitch, which is right here, we're going to work two single crochets. And then you may have to pull this cable back just a bit. And you'll see the next stitch. We're going to work just one in that stitch. Now working behind the next cable in the space right here, we're going to work two single crochets in that next stitch and then pulling back the cable one in that next space. I'm going to do that again. So the next space we work two single crochets, pull back the cable a bit, and then one. So the goal here as we work across with the back side of the cables, let me go ahead and turn to show you how, how well this is going to even these cablings up. But the goal is to have two and then one, two and then one, so that you have a total of three single crochets behind each cable. Now obviously this first stitch, which was right here, was worked in that extra single crochet that is not behind a cable. So we're going to go across the row and working again. I'll do this for you one more time. And if you clearly just have, have no understanding or little understanding and you want to watch another video on this particular stitch, just look in the video description below and you'll see that playlist and just pick out the cable stitch. So one more time, we work two single crochets 
in that next stitch and then where the cable is attached you see those two loops of that single crochet work that next single crochet there and do that all the way across the row now after working this all the way across the row working the three single crochets behind each cable we're going to work one additional stitch now it's going to be in this turning chain I'm going to just take two loops right like that and work that last single crochet in that should bring your stitch count right on back to 212 stitches okay so now we're going to turn and we are going to repeat rows two and three which would be low front ridge rows one and two so I, I'm not trying to confuse you with the numbers I'm just trying to be very precise here so I'm going to just talk you through how to do th these since we have already done them one time we're going to chain one and again starting in the second stitch just working in the front loop only we're going to work slip stitches in each stitch all the way across and then once we get to the end of the row we're going to chain one turn and then we are going to work a single crochet I just want to show whoops just want to show you where these stitches are um, we're going to work in the remaining loop right here okay these remaining loops just like we did in the earlier demonstration again if you need additional stitch support for the low front ridge just look in the video description below or you can go to the time mark that I have listed across the bottom for the low front ridge although it might be easier just to look at another video and then come back to this one okay so go ahead and work rows six and seven which is the low front ridge rows repeating them one more time just like we did down here so after seven rows this is what you should have and your stitch count should still remain the same and generally speaking within written patterns if you don't see a stitch count at the end of the row it's simply because it has not changed okay so now we're going to go on to rows eight and nine and this is going to be the arrow stitch this is one of my favorite simple cabling patterns we're going to start with a chain two and we're going to work double crochets in the first two stitches this is not necessarily part of the arrow stitch itself but these are kind of filler stitches and we're going to have two of these at the end of the row as well after working those two double crochets we're going to wrap our hook two times to prepare for a treble crochet but first we're going to skip three stitches one two three and then that next stitch we're going to work working through both of the loops as we normally would we're going to work a treble crochet now working behind that treble crochet we're going to work double crochets in each of the three stitches that we skipped so that's one two and three and it should look like that let's do that again and this is basically the repeat we're going to work all the way across the row wrap our hook two times for that treble skip three stitches one two three and then work that treble in that next stitch and then working behind this stitch and if you want you can even hold this down with your thumb we're going to double crochet in those three skipped stitches so make sure that you're let me go ahead and finish that one two three so we're going to make sure that you're working treble crochets for this first stitch and then double crochets behind it I'll do that with you one more time skip the next three one two three treble crochet in that next stitch working behind the treble crochet we're going to work double crochets in the three stitches that we just skipped so go ahead and work that all the way across the row and I will finish this with you at the end at the end of the row you should have a total of two 
stitches we're just going to work a double crochets in those last two stitches just like we did at the beginning of the row you should have a total of 52 arrow stitches begun now we're going to work row 9 by turning we're going to chain 2 again and we are going to work double crochets in those first two stitches After we do that, we're going to work the second row, row two of the arrow stitch, and it is worked by skipping the next three double crochets, and then we're going to work a treble crochet in the next stitch, which was a treble crochet. Let me show you on the other side. I'll show the, I'll show you a better view in just a second. Now, working in front of that treble crochet, this again is with the back side facing you. We're going to work double crochets in each of the stitches that we skipped. Okay, let's do that again. Skip the next three stitches, one, two, three. These are all double crochets and then treble crochet in that next stitch, which again is a treble crochet from the last row. And then working in front of that stitch, we're going to double crochet in each of the three stitches that we skipped. Okay, it's just like that. This is what it looks like with the back side facing. And from the front side, you see these beautiful arrows forming. So let me work that for you one more time, and then we're going to work this the rest of the way across the row and I will show you the ending of the row. Skip the next three stitches, treble crochet in that next stitch, working in front of that treble crochet, double crochet in each of the three stitches that we skipped. So go ahead and work that all the way across the row. After working that all the way across, we have two stitches left and we're just going to work double crochets in those last two stitches. This is with the back side facing and now with the front side facing. You can see how lovely this arrow stitch looks. Now for the next two rows, this will be for rows 10 and 11. They're going to be the same. We're going to chain one and we're going to single crochet in each stitch all the way across the row. Again, the stitch count has not changed. You should still have 212 stitches all the way across the row. So work row 10, single crochet across, chain one turn, and then work single crochets back um, you know, the other direction. And then I will show you where to go from there. Okay, this is what you should have after completing 11 rows. and we just worked row 10 and row 11 of the single crochet rows. Okay, now for the next six rows, we are going to repeat two rows, rows one and two of the low front ridge, and then rows one and two of the cable stitch, and then rows one and two of the low front ridge again. So those are six rows, and we're going to work them on this side of the arrow so that it will be symmetrical on both sides of the arrow. So go ahead and work those rows and if you need additional stitch support, look at the bottom of the screen and I will have a time mark as to when row number two begins so that you can watch that. So after you complete this section on the other side, we will continue on with the basket weave. After working through row 17, this is what you should have. Now we're ready to begin row 18, which is the first row of the basket weave, and actually rows 18, 19, and 20 will be worked the same, but I will show you um, a little bit into the next row as well, just so that you know what you'll be looking at. We're going to go ahead and chain two, work a half double crochet in that very first stitch. Now to begin the basket weave pattern, instead of working in through the top loops, we're going to actually work the stitch around the body of the stitch. And this is the way that works. We wrap our hook for our double crochet. We go around, let me show you, 
around the body. It's like giving it a belt. And then we complete the stitch as usual. We're going to do that three times in each one in each of the next three stitches. You can work these post stitches around any of the other fundamental crochet stitches. It might seem a little tricky to work around the single crochets, but it really doesn't have to be. And for the next one, we're going to come in for the back post double crochet. We're going to come in the back, work our hook around the front and go out the back door of the next stitch and then complete that double crochet. We're going to do that once in the next three stitches. That's one, two, and the last one. Oh, come on, there you go. Three. So let me go ahead and pause and show you what that looks like. So we're going to work that all the way across the row. Three front post double crochet. And then we're going to follow that with three back posts where you're coming in the back and going around the stitch. Now again, if you need extended instruction on how to do the basket weave and front and back post stitches, just check the video description with those Karen, um, I'm sorry, Erin Celtic stitches below and um, you can study them for a little while longer. It'll give you more extensive um, teaching than what I'm going to give here. So go ahead and work this all the way across and I'll show you how the row ends. After working this all the way across the row, we have one stitch left, which is right here. And we're going to work a half double crochet in that last stitch. And let's see what we have all the way across. Now we're going to start row number 19. And row number 19 and 20 will be worked the exact same way with the chain two. And it's just the way we worked row 18. But I wanted you to see that it looks different now. And I believe you're going to find these next two rows to be easier than what we just worked. We're going to work a half double in that first stitch, just like that. This really does help us to maintain our stitch count by starting the rows this way. And then we work three front post double crochets. And you can see just how much easier it is to wrap the hook around the larger stitch. And then we follow that with three back post double crochets. One, two, and three. So I'll do that with you. Whoops, let's go ahead and get it through all the loops there. I'll go ahead and do that with you one more time. Three front post double crochets and you can feel them with the nerve endings in your thumb and tall man fingers that these stitches are on the front side or you know kind of protruding towards the front and then these next stitches you feel are protruding from the back so you know to do three back post double crochets over those next three stitches. So go ahead and work rows 19 and row 20 in the same way. And just to let you know, at the end of the row, let me go ahead and show you the ending. Ah, there we go. And when we get to the end of the row, let me use my hook, we're going to work a half double crochet in that last stitch, which is a half double crochet, and that's how we end. And then when you turn, you'll begin again with a half double crochet in that first stitch and then front post in the next three stitches and then back post double crochet in the next three after that. So this is what you should have at the end of row number 20. So we have worked three rows and these are really best counted by feeling them. You can feel one, two, three rows of that basket weave. Okay, now for rows 21, 22, and 23, 
we're going to turn and this is going to be with the back side of your work facing you as we begin row 21. We're going to chain two, one, two. And we are going to half double and that first half double crochet. Now we're going to do something a little different. We're going to reverse the direction of the basket weave. And for the start of the next three rows, we're going to work back post double crochets over the first three post stitches. One, two, and three. So that's it's the opposite of what you see from the previous row. And for the next three stitches, we're going to work front post double crochets again, reversing the direction of the weave. I'm still just working front post and back post double crochets, but this is what it should look like. So that is going to be your repeat all the way across the row. We're going to work three back post double crochets. And then we're going to follow that with three front post double crochets. Let's just take another look at that to see how you are reversing the direction. So we're going to do this all the way across the row and then we're going to work that half double crochet in that last stitch. And let me show you something. When we turn to work the next two rows, this will be rows 22 and 23, we're going to chain two half double in the first half double of the row, but then you're going to be working three back post double crochets and three front post double crochets just the way we started this row but on the following two rows you're going to be going right along with what you see so like if you see front post you're going to work front post if you see back post you're going to see back post okay so it's going to you're basically going to have something that looks like this but over here so it's going to be just offset so I'll go ahead and work the next three rows. That's rows 21, 22, and 23. And I will show you what I have after I work those three rows. After completing rows 21, 22, and 23, this is what the basket weave section should look like. Now we're going to turn. Let's look at the front side facing. Okay, now we have three more rows to work of the basket weave, and they're going to be worked in the same manner that rows 18, 19, and 20 were worked. Okay, so we're going to chain two for row 24 to begin, and we're going to work that half double cr crochet in that first stitch. And then after that, we are going to, again, work the same way that the row 18 was worked, which means we're going to be reversing the direction of the basket weave on row 24 by working three front post double crochets. This is going to be opposite of what you see from the last row. And then we follow that with three back post double crochets. One, two, and three. There goes my hook. Okay, so just like this. And we're going to work that all the way across. And then again, as we turn, once we start working row 25, we'll start with that half chain two, half double crochet in the first stitch, and then we'll be working front post double crochets and back post, and it'll be with what you see as you go forward so that the next three rows will look the same. So go ahead and work rows 24 through 26. This is what you should have at the end of row 26. Just want you to get a good look 
at this basket weave pattern how you have three rows and then three rows and then three more rows. Now we're going to turn to work row 27 which is going to be an easy row. This is just going to be a chain one and we're going to single crochet in each chain all the way across and this will kind of help to even out the waviness as you go across so we can continue to work another repeat that I will tell you about after we finish this row. So go ahead and finish row 27, single crochet in each stitch all the way across the row. After finishing that row of single crochet, this is what your stole should look like. Now we're going to repeat rows two through seven again and once again, I'm going to just remind you, rows two would be the two rows of the low front ridge and then two rows of the cable stitch and then two rows of the low front ridge again. So we're going to repeat that so that that will come out over here. I'm not going to go through those stitches again, but if you need the stitch support, just look at the video description or look at the bottom of the screen. I will have that time mark once again so you can go back to rows two through seven. Again, that's the low front ridge, two rows, two rows of the cable stitch, and then two rows of the low front ridge again. So go ahead and work the next six rows, and then I will show you how to work the shadow box. Okay, after completing rows 28 through 33, which again was a repeat of rows two through seven, this is what you should have. I'll go ahead you can see how the cable and the low front ridge uh, combination frames the basket weave so nicely. Okay, now we're ready for rows 34 and 35. We'll start with row 34, and this will begin the shadow box, which is a very interesting um, combination of stitches. And it's also the center motif for this stole. This will be the halfway point once we complete um, this next row. So we're going to start with a chain two. We're going to double crochet in the first two stitches. And now we're ready to make our first shadow box, or at least the bottom half of the first shadow box. We're getting ready for a treble crochet here on our hook. Skip the next two stitches and just working in the top loops the way you normally would. We're going to treble crochet in the next stitch and one more stitch. So we have, again, skip two stitches and then treble crochet in the next two stitches. Now working behind these last two stitches, we're going to treble crochet in the two stitches that we skipped. This is very similar to a cable, but it's not really a cable because we're not working post stitches. We're just working in through the top loops like we normally would. Okay, now we're going to do the second half of this shadow box. We're going to skip the next two stitches and we're going to front post. I'm sorry, we're going to work treble crochets. I was about to say front post. We're going to treble crochet in the next two stitches just working in through the tops. Now working in front of these two stitches, we're going to treble crochet in the two stitches that we skipped. Let's make that a treble. Okay, let's pause and take a look at this. So it looks even a little bit like a honeycomb from some of my other patterns, but this is worked in the top loops only. Okay, after, okay, I'm going to get some yarn here. After we work those eight stitches, we're going to work double crochet in the next two stitches. So make sure you're working double crochets in between. These are all treble crochets. I'm trying to be very deliberate um, so that you understand they are different. Okay, now we're going to do this again. I'm going to do this uh, again for you, and I'm going to, uh, this is going to be the repeat all the way across the row. Skip the next two stitches, treble, crochet, 
in the next two stitches, working behind these two stitches, we're going to treble crochet in those two stitches that we just skipped. And if that's a little bit tricky for you, you can just pull these two stitches down. So after doing those four stitches, we're going to skip two stitches and treble crochet in the next two stitches. And working in front of these two stitches, we're going to treble crochet in the two stitches that we just skipped. Just like that. And then we're going to follow that with two double crochets, one in each of the next two stitches. And that's going to be your repeat all the way across the row. Okay, after completing row 34, this is what you should have. Now you should have a total of 21 of these shadow boxes begun. And this is actually a very good time to go ahead and do a quick visual check to make sure that they all look the same and you know as you worked in front and behind these stitches that they all um, are looking the way they should because otherwise once we work this next row we're going to find out where the problems are if there are any and I just want to save you some time ripping out. All right so let's go ahead and turn and we have the back side facing us and this is row number 35. And so we're going to start with the chain two, one, two, and we're going to work a double crochet in those first two double crochets. So after completing those two double crochets worked in those double crochets, we're going to skip the next two stitches and we're going to work treble crochets in the next two stitches. just like that. Now working behind these last two stitches, we're going to treble crochet in the two stitches that we skipped. Again, just working through the top loops. Okay, so that's halfway completed. Now for the second half of the shadow box, we're going to skip the next two stitches, treble crochet, and those next two stitches working in through the top loops. Now working in front of the last two stitches we just worked, we're going to treble crochet into the two stitches that we skipped. Okay, now we're going to double crochet in the next two double crochets and that is your repeat across the row. Now as you're working this with the back side facing you it looks like a big X in front of you. But now when we turn to see the front side facing we see this beautiful shadow box formed. It looks very much like the honeycomb stitch that I do but we're working it through the top loops. So it is it is quite a different stitch. has um, less tension in it. Alright let me do that for you one more time just so there's no doubt when we get to these cross stitches of the shadow box we're going to skip the next two treble crochet and these next two stitches working in through the top loops working behind those stitches we just worked we're going to treble crochet in the two stitches that we skipped And for the second half of this shadow box, skip the next two stitches, treble crochet, and those next two treble crochets. And then working in front of those last two stitches, we're going to treble crochet in those two stitches that we just skipped. Just 
just like that. So we have what looks to be like an X, and then we double crochet in the next two stitches. And by repeating that, it will take you all the way across the row. And again, you will have 21 shadow boxes. And let's go ahead and take a look at the front side. And you can see those beautiful shadow boxes right there. After completing row 35, this is the way the shadow box should look on your stole. So now we have two rows, rows 36 and rows 37. I'm going to just go ahead and start you on those, but I'm going to talk you through the rest after that. So for rows 36 and 37, all you're going to do is single crochet in each stitch all the way across the row. Okay, just working a single crochet in each stitch. And again, the stitch count should still remain constant at 212 stitch stitches. And then we're going to work another row of single crochet back. So make sure that you do work two rows of single crochet. And that's going to bring you back again to the front side facing. Okay, after you do that, I have a actually a larger assignment for you. So after you complete those two rows, rows 36 and 37, working those single crochets all the way across, and you'll come back, you will have the front side facing. And since I have taught all the stitches that you are going to need, I'm going to just refer you back to some time marks. You can also find this information in the video description below. You're going to repeat rows two through seven again, and that it would be the low front ridge, the cable stitch and a low front ridge that would be a total of uh, six rows. And um, after you do that, you're going to repeat rows 18 through 27, which would be the basket weave section. And then once you complete that, you're going to repeat rows 2 through 17, which would be the the low front ridge, the cable low front ridge, the arrow rows, followed by the low front ridge cable and that low front ridge one final time. So this project would be completely symmetrical once you complete that. And then, okay, now that I've completed through row 69, let's take a look at what we have here. I'm just going to show you all the various stitches. And this again is the center. That would be the shadow box. And then, again, paralleling on the other side, the rows where we first started this project. Okay, for row 70, we are simply going to work a row of single crochets across. Let's go ahead and try to get the camera to focus. There we go. So we're just going to chain one and single crochet in each stitch across. Once I meet you at the end of this row, then we're going to begin working the perimeter round. Now that we've just completed row 70, it's time for us to move on to the edging portion of this stole, which is going to be worked around the other three sides. So we're going to turn the stole 90 degrees and we're going to be working across the row ends. And just for the record, there's not a stitch count on this written in the book, but I will give you one as soon as I finish this row or working across the edge. All right, we're going to work a single crochet in the same place as where the last single crochet was worked. And this is what we're going to do across. We're going to chain one, and then we're going to work another single crochet, chain one, single crochet, and what you are trying to do here is to spread these evenly across. And so the goal, as you work this across, whatever number you end up with here will determine how many, uh, well, it will determine your fringe and the knotted uh, fringe that we're going to work at the end. So whatever you do here, when you're counting these chain one spaces where the knots or the yarn for the um, fringe is going to be connected, make sure that you have the same number on both ends. Okay, so I'm just going to work this evenly across. And again, the number doesn't really matter all that much as long as 
whatever you work on one side of the stroll matches what you have on the other side. After having worked across these row ends with the single crochet chain one, I am going to include the chain one which is at the corner here. So far I have 50, that's five zero chain ones. Now when I continue on the other side of the stole, I'm going to have one more. So we're going to say 51 chain ones. I'm going to chain one there and I'm going to single crochet in the same place where the last single crochet was worked and I'm going to single crochet in each stitch all the way across. Now I am working in the foundation chain and remember from the beginning I, I just worked on one strand of that foundation chain. Well the other two strands are right there and I'm going to cover them up completely with this row of single crochets. So this is yeah, just another reason why I don't generally use alternative uh, chains because I generally cover them up and as, if you crochet them loosely enough they work out quite well and have a lot less added bulk to your work where that chain is. So, all right, so I'm going to go ahead and finish working single crochets across this side. Then I'm going to chain one and then I'm going to work the single crochet chain ones across on the other side and I will show you the join at the end of this. After working all the way across the other side with the row ends, I have chained one and I'm going to join with a slip stitch. Notice that I single crocheted in the same space where that very first single crochet was of row 70. And I'm going to join with a slip stitch and give it a chain, give it a tug. And now I'm going to find where my scissors went right here. And I'm going to go ahead and try not to cut myself there and leave a nice long tail and let me give you a really quick tutorial on how to hide this loose strand. At the end of my videos I like to give just a quick little tutorial on how you can hide these loose ends nice and quickly and so you see I just threaded my yarn needle and then I'm going to turn and have the back side of this work facing that way when you hide these, they don't show as much. So I'm going to go down into this stitch, right like that, on the back side. And I think I'm just going to run this underneath this row of single crochets since this will be hidden quite well. And just getting to cooperate. And I'm going to do this. You, know, you can really, there's no hard and fast rule on how much of this strand you should hide. Um, I like to have uh, you know, at least an inch and a half or so, just you know, just to make sure it doesn't pull itself out. Not that I'm worried about that. So I'm going to go ahead and just just pull it nice under like that. I'm going to go ahead and take that off the needle and then I'm going to pull it back. You see that how much more of the yarn got hidden underneath there? Then I'm going to cut close to the stitch but make sure you don't cut your beautiful stitches. Give it another tug and that is hidden. So now I have several more. I'm going to go ahead and hide. Go ahead and hide these now and then I will show you how to work the knotted fringe. I've completed one side using the knotted fringe and I wanted to show you what this looks like before I show you how to add the fringe to the other side. Okay, um, this I think has a very attractive look to it. Now some of the yarn, if your yarn is a little bit curly, maybe it was like towards the end of the ball or something like that, that is very, very easily correctable just simply by lightly steaming it with a um, clothes steamer. Um, possibly with steam from your iron as long as you don't let the iron touch the um, the yarn because that can can sometimes damage it. Okay now we're ready to work on the fringe and for the fringe you're going to need either a book 
or something sturdy. It could be a piece of cardboard. It could be a notebook, whatever. Um, but what I'm recommending, we need to make 24 inch fringe. So I'm going to show you here that when you measure this book all the way down the side and a little bit of the binding, you do get 12 inches. And what we're going to do is we're going to wrap the yarn around this book. And I'll show that to you right now. And every time we wrap it around one time, we're going to come up with a 24 inch piece. And I'm just going to go ahead and make a little bit of fringe and show you just a really quick way to do it. Um, I like to count by fives as I do this. Um, that way I know that I'm going to have enough um, and I'm not going to cut more yarn than I really need because if I have any of this yarn that's left over, I definitely want to use it for something else. So this is what I do. Hold it carefully. And as I wrap this yarn, I'm not doing it real tightly. You don't want to pull it real, real taut. Just, just have it kind of loose loose in your hand okay and just wrap it around the book okay so that's one set of five okay that's two sets of five let me pull some more yarn out because I don't want this yarn to be tightened as I um, as I wrap it because if it's too tight then the fringe is going to shrink up and you're not going to have those 24 inch pieces. Okay, two, three. Okay, so that's three sets. Let's pull some more up here. Okay, and I'll do one more set. Okay, so I've now wrapped this around 25 times. So what I'm going to do is, is just simply Trim the top, and this is where it's kind of nice if you use a book. Don't use your favorite book, obviously. Use a book that's, you know, pretty sturdy. And, and it, Anyway, you do want to be careful. Um, and then just cut across. And now I have, well, I didn't, didn't cut one. There we go. So now I have, well, you can see the static electricity. It's very dry here in my home during the winter time. Now we have enough fringe to work with. So I'm going to go ahead and cut more fringe so that I have enough all the way across. I'm going to need approximately 18 uh, sets of five for each end. So I'm going to go ahead and cut those and then I'll show you how to connect them in. Okay, now that we've got all of our fringe cut, I just want to say a couple things about this. As you can see, it's a bit curly right now, but don't let that worry you. Um, I'm going to go ahead and show you up close how to connect this in to your shawl or to your to your wrap um, and then after we do that I'm going to take out my little steamer and I'm going to show you how you can steam this out before we do the final um, the final knotting and the final trim and I also want to mention if the the item that you used to trim your fringe is a little bit longer than what I have that's actually fine um, because we do want to leave a little bit extra I mean in in the 24 inch fringe that's in the direction there's a little bit extra built into that number so that you can trim up to an inch off of the final cut okay so that when we get this all evened up you'll have plenty of fringe left I promise you but anyway, I just didn't want you to worry about the curliness of your yarn. All right, so we are going to take care of that. I got you covered. So let's okay, so let's go ahead and get started. Now what you're going to want to do is take five of the strands in your hand and try to get the ends evened up on one end. So hopefully you can see what I'm doing here. I'm getting them kind of all even on one side and then I'm going to try to try to straighten them out as best I can and then I'm going to estimate where the center is so that's it's really a little bit of a challenge here with all the static electricity in the winter time so now I'm going to take my hook it doesn't really matter what size you hook what size hook you use for this step 
Um, the J hook that you have should be fine. I'm actually using a K just because it's available. And you're going to want to find the first chain one spot, which is right here. Okay, remember the chain one spot's worked at the end. Now, so with the front side facing up, go ahead and pull those down like so. All the strand, strands, rather, over, and then pull it through. And then give it a tug. And we've begun the fringe. So let's do that. I'll do that a couple more times for you. We take five strands. And we're going to get it as even as possible. And again, we're not shooting for perfection here. You know, you want to be somewhat accurate, but um, you know, do the best you can. There is uh, extra built into this um, for, you know, getting it even later on. Okay, so we're going to skip the next chain one space. And in the next chain one space, we're going to put another of the strands. So go ahead and pull them through. Put them all over the hook and then pull them through. And then pull it nice and tight. Now if you don't like the way the strands are falling here, if they look really a jumbled mess, you go ahead and take it out and try it again. Okay, I'm going to do one more for you here and then I'm going to have you do the whole whole side back and forth. Um, again, we're going to line up these threads as best we can on one end and go ahead and smooth them out a little bit. Find the center. And then we go back to where we were here. We're going to skip the next chain one space and we're going to put our hook in the next chain one space. and just pull it on through. Okay, so we're gonna do this all the way across. Now, if you get to the end, um, you want it to be somewhat symmetrical. And you know, if, if there's a chance that you don't like where it ends, you can always add an extra tassel down here in the corner to even it out. But I'm gonna go ahead and work across my end and I'll show you, you know, where I am once I get to the end here. Okay, I've gone ahead and put my fringe along both ends of this. And as you can see, this is a curly mess. So I'm gonna fix that right now. I have a little hand operated steamer here and you may have something better than this at home. Um, these are readily available online and they really work well. I wanted to show you, I'm just gonna recommend you steaming, steaming this out just like so. Okay, and you can already see it, see the um, curl, curliness falling out. You need to be careful though not to burn yourself with this because the steam can really burn. So I'm going to go ahead and finish steaming this and getting all the curl. You can see how, how it's falling out. I'm going to go ahead and pull on it a little bit. Also, if you get one of these little steamers, um, I'd recommend using distilled water rather than tap water just so that the minerals don't you know, spurt at you and, and, and sometimes they can actually damage clothes and so forth. Okay. So anyway, you can get an idea. See how well that worked and how the steam just took all the curl right out of that? Okay, it's not perfect, but... Um, it's straight enough now for us to do the next step. Actually, that, that's actually very good. Okay, so that's where we are now. So that's in a good place. And also you see how uneven it is down here. And we're going to take care of all that as soon as we start tying our knots. So let's go ahead and I will show you how to tie the knotted fringe. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and start you on the end piece first. Okay, so for this end piece, where we tie our first knot, we're going to take all of this yarn and we're going to take half of this yarn. So that's going to be five strands. So you can just count out five strands. It should be, you know, where it's split about halfway. 
and I like to wrap it around my finger like so and then pull it through just a regular old knot and then you want to be careful don't just yank it tight but you want to leave about an inch I'm just estimating but let's go ahead and let's look at the um, so about an inch maybe even a little more if you can see that this is all approximate it doesn't have to be exact um, so I like it there and so now I'm going to just give it a tug and a pull and I think that looks good for the first one okay now for the second second one right beside it again we're going to take half of this I'm going to count out five strands and we have five strands from the other side and again just wrap it around pull it through and pull it down and, and you can use the space here as a guide and, and don't worry about it being perfectly exact you know it can actually sometimes a more rustic look um, where things are just a little uneven is you know gives it some character okay so now I'm gonna do it again I'm gonna take the remaining strands here and the strands over there five from the other side wrap them around the finger and then bring them through okay and just make sure you get that spacing before you pull it too tight okay I like that go ahead and give it a tug so you can see how this is coming so I'm gonna um, go ahead and do five one two three four five from the other side you know what that's not exactly in the middle so I'm gonna see I'm gonna get the five that are in the middle here yeah, I like that better. One, two, three, four, five there. And we take the five from the other side. Wrap it around the fingers. Pull it through. And then compare it to what you're doing here. Okay, I like that. So you can see how this knotted fringe is, is coming out. Now after we do, I'm going to go ahead and do all the knotted fringe, but once I go ahead and do that, you're going to need to take a pair of scissors after we finish. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a look at this and decide about where I want to trim. I think I want to trim about here. And then I can trim all the fringe to have it look very, very even. Okay, so I'll show you how much shorter that may end up being than this one here. So I, I can cut a good inch off of that and still have lovely, lovely fringe. Okay, so won't you go ahead and work on those knots all the way across and I'll show you what I have when I get done. Well, I hope you enjoyed making the Gaithersburg Stole with me today. If you did, I would love to hear from you. Please comment in the comment section below. God bless. Bye-bye.